Today we're taking a look at this, the brand new Sigma 45mm f2.8 contemporary lens. Now I've been shooting with this for the best part of about a week. I've been shooting with it with a couple of other Sigma lenses. So we've had two art lenses, the 35mm f1.2, 14 to 24 f2.8, and then this contemporary lens, the 45mm f2.8. And it's a really, really cool little lens because, because of the size of it and the optical quality that you're able to get from it, it's a perfect travel size lens, you know, everyday lens. I mean, this is gonna go so well with some of the smaller mirrorless cameras. I've been using an a7 III with it, so there's obviously the Sony E-mount, but it does come as an L-mount option as well. So let's talk a little bit about the image quality first of all, then we can get onto kind of the design and the feel of it as well. So image quality wise, optically, I think this is actually really, really good. Considering the size of this lens, I really like it. 45 millimeter, if you've ever seen any of my other videos reviewing other similar focal length lenses, so 40 mil, 45 mil, I love shooting around this kind of focal length. It's just a little bit wider than 50 and then a little bit tighter than 35. I really, really like it. Um, it's just great for all round kind of stuff. So whether that be portrait, landscape, street photography, all kinds of stuff, totally possible with this lens. F2.8 as well. That's a nice fast aperture. That means you're letting in a good amount of light. You get nice bright images. That means you can shoot in lower light situations, but it also gives you a nice bit of bokeh. So if you are shooting portraits, if you're getting closer up, you're gonna be getting some nice bokeh, nice blurred out background. And I'm really happy to say, that does look really good. I've been trying out a variety of different stuff. So like I say, portrait, landscape. I'm really happy to say the images are nice and sharp. The color rendition is really good. Even shooting wide open, at f2.8, I was able to get some really, really nice sharp images. So I was using the Sony Eye autofocus for portraits, make sure I was nailing the focus on the eye. I really like, that's nice and sharp and then blurred background. I really, really like the look of that. Now you've got a seven blade rounded diaphragm, which gives you pretty smooth bokeh. It doesn't look as good as the art lens, the 35 mm f1.2, but that's fair enough. That is fair enough. This is also a considerably cheaper option as well, but the bokeh does look really nice. And especially if you're up close for portraits and stuff like that, that bokeh does look nice and smooth. I also never had any issues with flaring or ghosting or anything like that. And stopping down to F4, F8, stuff like that, just only increased that sharpness across the image. Now, in terms of the actual design of the lens itself, like I said before, one of the big things about this lens is its size. Look at that. It is, it is really nice and small. It's lightweight, although it's not super, super light, which I like because sometimes you get lenses this size and they weigh like almost nothing. Uh, this has got just, just a hint of weight to it, so it feels good quality if that makes sense. It's not it's not heavy enough to cause any issues to anyone, but I, I can just feel that it's there, you know? So when it's sitting on the front of, let's say the A7 III, which is what I've been using, actually it feels really nice. The system is really well balanced. I really, really like it. It also comes with this lens hood, which I've got to say, a little bit like with the 35mm actually, f1.2, this lens hood is incredibly well constructed. It feels like it's metal or, or something. I think it must be metal. But it's incredibly well constructed, and for most of the time I've been shooting, I've just left that on the front because it just it's just a bit of added protection for the lens. Overall, though, the lens is, is constructed really well. It feels good to hold. The quality is definitely there. It's dust and splash proof as well, really making it a perfect travel lens, everyday lens, perfect that kind of stuff. In terms of the actual construction, we've got an aperture ring on here, which is really nice, and it's kind of... I don't know how you describe this, but toothed. I'll show some images up on the screen of what I'm talking about. So it actually is really easy to get to, even when you're looking through the viewfinder, and just turn. I really like that. It doesn't have a D-clicker, but then again, that's not something I'm really gonna be that fussed about with this lens. The focus ring is also nicely weighted, so if you do like to use manual focus, that is a great option. Otherwise, you've just got the AF-MF focus switch. So it's a pretty sleek little lens. Like I mentioned earlier, Sigma actually sent us three lenses. So this one and then two others. You can check the videos for those other two, the 35 f1.2 and the 14 to 24 f2.8. I'll pop links to those down in the description so you can see those full videos. But the main thing about this one, it is quite considerably cheaper. So it's a nice option for anyone who wants to get maybe a 35 or a 50. This is a perfect middle ground. Love. I love a 45 mil. And this would be great. Anyone looking, like I've mentioned a few times now, anyone looking for a, a kind of everyday lens or they want to go traveling and they don't, they want a very small system, 
this is going to be absolutely perfect. You know, it is such a small little lens that you can just pop your camera in your bag with absolutely no issues at all. Autofocus wise, I never had any issues at all. It was nice and fast, nice and reliable. Like I said, I was using the Sony a7 III, so I was able to use things like eye autofocus, but it just always blows me away how fast it is. You know, no hunting, straight on, snaps on, very reliable, portraits are a breeze, landscapes are a breeze. Really enjoy shooting with this. Now I'll pop a link so you can see the price, description, full specs, everything on our website. I'll pop that link down in the description so you can check that all out. If you do have any questions about the lens at all, pop them down in the comments. Any thoughts as well, I'd love to hear them as well. I always like hearing your thoughts about these new items. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe as well because there's all kinds of new stuff all the time, tutorials, reviews, anything you can think of. I'll see you in the next video and as always, thanks for watching.